there, Omaha. Welcome into another episode of Restaurant Hoppin'. I'm your host, Dan Hoppin', and there are so many great breakfast and brunch restaurants around town. Two of my favorites are Gravy Train and Lisa's Radio Cafe, and I have the owners of those restaurants sitting right here, but we are not here to talk about those restaurants today, at least not directly today, because these two sisters have teamed up to open a new brunch spot in Ralston. And as soon as I heard that this team up was happening, I was like, I'm in. Whenever that opens, like first week, I'm going. And it surpassed even my high expectations. We are talking about Lemon Tree Cafe located right down in downtown Ralston. Uh, I have Megan McClarney and Jennifer McGuire here to tell us all about it. Guys, you've been on the podcast before, but you're back as a team. Yes. Welcome to back so to the show. To be here. Thank you for having us. Yeah, awesome. Thanks, Dan. So, because we have multiple voices on today, for those listening, uh, would you mind maybe just saying your name, introducing yourself, and then give me give me a forty five second pitch on your individual endeavors? Not talking about lemon tree just yet, because we're going to talk about lemon tree a lot. Okay, I'm first. <laughs> I'm Megan McClarney, and um, I, gosh, I, I run Gravy Train um, with my family. I grew up working at Lisa's Radial and had an opportunity to do this little spin off here. So, Lemon Tree Cafe, um, after meeting meeting our business partner, Denise, it was just kind of an, an instant, um, instant passion project. It wasn't in the plans, it was not in the business plan to add another restaurant, not at all. But, um, you know, when you meet people that you can see a future with, um, it makes your creativity grow. And that's where, you know, Jennifer and I saw saw a future there to do something with, with her and, and our families all together. I also still work at the Med Center. So I'm a dietitian and nutrition therapist and diabetes advocate. Um, and th- that's what I've been doing. I'm still convinced there's like four of you. But right. r- regardless, <laughs> Jennifer? Hi, I am Jennifer McGuire, and I run Lisa's Radio Cafe, also mother to four plus five children, five, a bonus fifth child, sorry. So there might be four of you as well. <laughs> she has to take care of me now. Yeah. <laughs> yes, also another job. No, just kidding. <laughs> so obviously two very well-known, iconic uh, breakfast spots, but I want to talk about Lemon Tree Cafe today. You guys just opened in April of 2023. Um, I mean... You guys both already own and and run separate establishments. You have families. You're not people that I suspect have an abundance of free time. So where did this kind of, you mentioned, Megan, this wasn't really on the radar. It wasn't in the business plan. Where did this come from? How did it come together? And why were you like, yes, we need to open another concept? Oh, if if Denise, our partner, were here, I would have her answer this because she's, she calls it our business blind date. (laughs) <laughs> we are we are three working moms that um, decided to do this because it's a way to create a lifestyle for ourselves where we do meaningful work and support each other and can grow into ourselves and grow into our community because we have each other there. Um, but it, we actually have to give a shout out to Long Walk Farm, which is a, a friend um, from the farmer's market. And we go way back, um, you know, they, they've they been supporters. We, we support them. And for some reason, they when they met Denise and found out that Denise was looking to replace a tenant um, who was leaving in that spot, um, and she owns the building, they said, you got to go talk to Megan. <laughs> I don't know why. I did not need another restaurant. And Denise was not trying to get into the restaurant business at all either. She just needed a tenant. And um, we started talking. They made us meet. And when we started talking, um, it went from putting a gravy train into this building immediately to, whoa, are we talking about changing the culture of how restaurants are are run? Are are we talking about building up what is good in Ralston and growing into that? And then it was like, I think you need to meet my sister, Jennifer, (laughs) you know? And and really, no deals were made until we all kind of agreed. Like we're all we're all partners in this. Yeah, it all just kind of it all came it's, together the way that it was supposed to. It's deep. I mean, it's a lot more than just um, another place to sell pancakes. You know, that's not really what we needed. We needed something else. Okay, what makes it deep? 
Oh, gosh. Okay. Well, we had like an unfulfilled um, dream, you know, to do to to do what our mom wanted to do. And mom, mom always wanted to to do more. Um, and she wanted two radials. <laughs> yeah. So we mom, mom was the titular Lisa. Of oh, Lisa's yeah. Radial cafe. Lisa. Yeah. Big Lisa. You know, the boss Lisa. She always had she was big dreamer and big energy. And she would go, we need to open another one. And, you know, it, she just always was like leveling up the food and the, the everything about it. But, um, you know, there was a time for that and it hadn't come yet. And Jennifer and I have so much food we want to cook. Like there is just like we can't put it all in one concept. It doesn't fit. And she, I kept saying, we got to get a food truck. We can, you know, and like <laughs> we would we would talk every summer and. And then it wasn't the time because, yeah, she's raising her family. And then I, I had a child and, you know, it wasn't our time. Both the um, other places were busy and busy building up. Yeah. Yeah. And um, it just wasn't there yet. And with Denise, um, she she's got a similar story. She's our missing puzzle piece. She's the honestly. missing puzzle piece. Yeah. She was she's a third another sister. Yeah. <laughs> but she has this history too like her family has owned this building and cultivated so many small businesses in in the in the city of Ralston and her parents any relationships yeah immigrants that struggled and made a way through doing good business with relationships and she just there was something about it you know where she is passionate about food and but she looked at us and she's like, you need you need like another person. <laughs> We're like, it's you. <laughs> <laughs> <I need you. laughs> yeah. So it just it's just um, it's like a realization of some history with her and her family. Um, you know, the the food that that is meaningful to them is getting worked into our menu now. So there's there's just a like a crossroads of of investment, I guess, generations of like her parents and now her and her child now turned 14. So he started working at Lemon Tree. Oh, wow. Yeah, this summer. So um, Jennifer's kids have started coming in. Mine just comes and eats all the ice cream bars I got to stock in the freezer for him. <laughs> 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 Makes nuts. Wait, so you make biscuits and gravy and like fresh cinnamon rolls and everything and he's eating ice cream bars he can't eat those <laughs> okay okay that that's fair that's fair no one gets biscuits no. <laughs> or cinnamon rolls oh, no. <laughs> so i i, I want to kind of flesh out the concept for uh for listeners and, and viewers right now because you sell biscuits and gravy and you sell mom's killer pancakes and some other dishes that could uh, be on the lisa's menu but this is not gravy train and it's not lisa's it's some kind of amalgamation with like other elements being pulled in as well how, how would you describe lemon tree to someone who hasn't visited yet i think we took all the best parts of both places and then added our extra creativity to it into all the extra dishes yeah things that we don't necessarily get to do in our other restaurants it's like the stuff you'd get if you came to our christmas morning yeah if we make it home. <laughs> this is what we cook for each other. This feel, is the... feel free to invite Sarah and I to your <laughs> next <laughs> Christmas morning because <laughs> that's the type of food I want to eat on Christmas. It's what we do. That's we love we love with food. And um, you know, we menus have to you have to kind of contain them in at some point. And it's hard with us it creatives. Is. <laughs> it is hard. <laughs> but um but that's like with our family, like going back to our parents and like the celebrations you have, like, you know, in all of our families. That's that's how we show love to each other. It's how we care for each other. And um, just mom taught mom made us foodies. Like Jennifer got a, a head start because um, she's like the the blood daughter of Lisa. <laughs> so she would. I mean, she was off in Korea as a child. You know, you were getting like the foodie exposure. I got caught up when, <laughs> when I came in the family at age eight. But you know, we just this is our secret menu stuff. This is the stuff we make for each other at the end of the day. I mean, you should be come in sometime on Sunday. At like one fifty when we're closing, we just start cooking. It's, mm -hmm. it's family meal, you know. Those are, but we put the family meal recipes on the menu. Oh, I love that. Okay, so tease like two or three. Well, we'll just start with one. Tease a menu item, or if you have a couple other ones that pop to your head, that like 
that was built from a special memory. Belly deli. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And <laughs> so the belly deli is a lunch sandwich that we have and it has our jalapeno cream cheese with a homemade by Denise's mom cranberry sauce and then um, our sliced turkey on sourdough bread with mixed greens. It's absolutely fabulous. It contains a little bit of our mother's because mm -hmm. um, the belly deli was a deli that our mother worked at in California. And the turkey cranberry cream cheese was a sandwich that was on their menu there. And it was one of her favorite things. So adding Denise's mom's cranberry sauce, it kind of brings both of our mothers into the mix. Yeah. And then we got crazy and put jalapeno cream yeah, cheese on it. Yeah, spiced it and kicked it up a notch <laughs> yeah. full of jalapenos. Because <laughs> that's like, it's mom food, but it's like 2023 mom food. Yeah. <laughs> we need some We just made it better. <laughs> Oh, yeah. I mean, it's very good. Can't tell you like what it means when, you know, when she's dropping off that that batch of cranberry sauce. It's just like gold. I, now, I know restaurant life is not easy, especially when you're you guys have multiple restaurants. I'm sure you are working crazy hours. There's a lot of frustrations. Customers can be both good and not so good. How much does it help, like, when you're having a really rough day to to have, like, these memories and this these inspirations? And it's not like this restaurant that I own and that I'm working at right now isn't just something that I'm doing for a job, but it's, like, kind of connected to our family DNA. How much does that, yeah. like, help you push through those rough days? It's what keeps you going, honestly. Yeah. We always say this, like, you guys are the reason we got up this morning, you know? Like, literally, I got out of bed real early. <laughs> <laughs> for for those people but and for each other like to be building a workplace where everyone can bring their best and can air a grievance and not be afraid you know of being seen as less valuable or um getting punished like you know we can we can have it out we can we can have a great laugh too and, and our laughs are about things that are you know we can tease each other about things that are deeper a little bit um Jennifer is the other day was teasing me and I was laughing really hard and I was like, no one else could have said that to me, <laughs> but you, um, but I have like a memory of, I think it was week two. We were really busy still. We were literally staffing with, so we, we thought we were going to go in with a certain staff and it didn't work out that way. So we ended up opening basically with just friends and family, like just oh wow, people waiting tables that had never waited tables, people cooking in the kitchen my first Sunday cooking, who had never worked in a kitchen. But she was bossing me around by the end because we have love, so we have communication. You can cook with anybody, you know. You you can you can give service without being polished and perfect if it comes from the heart. And those things are, at the end of the day, what the guest remembers. But I was um, checking on table 13. It was like our little window table. A couple ladies I didn't know. And they were eating... Um, the Monte Cristo, and uh, which is one of the mom things. Mom loved Monte Cristo, so I love Monte Cristos, and uh, we had to have one on the menu because we have the best French toast in the world. Just gonna say, <laughs> I'm not debating that. And we make it the exact same way, and we didn't learn that from anywhere. I don't know what. No, I don't know. Super weird, but it's worked out. That recipe was like just written itself. <laughs> so the Monte Cristo sandwich is a French toast, like a savory melt, but it's got French toast bread, right? And some places we'll phone it in and have you dunk it in like maple syrup, which is pretty good. We make our own jam for it, so it's always a little different. Um, but this lady, she was eating it. She says, "Oh my gosh!" And she she says, "I feel like I feel like I'm. This has brought me back to my childhood." And then she looked up and she had a tear. Oh wow! Run down her face, and then I said. Well, it's from my childhood. That's what it's supposed to do. And then I started crying. And we were both having these, like, happy tears. And it sounds really cheesy, but this is a real moment that happened. And I just went back and I was like, I don't really care how hard I work. <laughs> this is, like, literally what, what we're trying to do. And it, it writes itself. Um, when you have simple food that is done well, that is um, comes from a place of love, there's really no, no going wrong. Mm-hmm. Now you guys have talked about how you have all these all these mom dishes, all these all these memory dishes that you know, the things that you cook for staff meal like and they didn't fit into your other restaurants, but now you have basically a blank slate that you can do whatever you want with. 
how do you pick which ideas you want to put on the menu? Because you can't put them all on there. You can't execute everything. If you have a menu that's 15 pages, you're going to fall flat pretty fast. Mm -hmm. And you guys have a very hard. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. (laughs) No, I'm sorry. It's just been really hard. It really has. This has been our biggest, from the beginning, we've been working on the menu. From the minute we found out we were going to do it, it started with like three or four pages. Remember your sticker sheet? I know. Yeah. (laughs) No. Oh, yeah. (laughs) So many (laughs) different versions of the menu to begin with. To narrow it down to what we have has been really hard. And we are very excited to keep adding more dishes to it as well. So it's been really fun. You, I mean, you start with, you you have to look at who is working with you. What will make them succeed? You know, you can, you can have all kinds of things on the menu, but if it's not fun to put out, it won't be fun to serve. It won't be fun to receive, you know, so. We just, we went way down into what are our favorites. So like it's, it's our favorites. That's what made the cut for the, for the soft opening menu. And then we just released our first like real menu just last night. And they, we added a few things and they were the gaps. They were the things that made sense. Like we looked at like, what do we make really well that's missing? Jennifer was like, can we have a BLT on the menu? And I was like, <gasps> we forgot a BLT. We have the best bacon on the planet. The marinated tomatoes. And the tomatoes are crazy. The mayo, every layer of our BLT is special. And it looks like any other BLT you've ever had until you bite into it. Magic. Okay, I'm not going to lie. I was looking at the new menu last night and I saw the BLT and I was like, I think that's new. It's I new. love BLTs. I might need to check that out. And now that you guys are good. propping it up. <laughs> But the ch- chicken salad, the tuna, the tuna salad, you know, I mean, they're just things, things that you expect to see in a diner, you know, in a little cafe um, that's over 100 years old. I mean, some of the regulars are also probably over 100 years old, you know, I mean, it's a place that's been there forever. And that neighborhood wants it there because it's their place. So you have to put food on there that people want to eat every day. And so those are the first things we add. And then the specials are just for having fun. Jennifer's pancakes last week. Those were good. White chocolate chip cashew caramel on top. They were fabulous. (laughs) Okay, so I need to hear from you, Jennifer, because (laughs) Megan gets to play around at Gravy Train all the time. She's constantly making up new biscuits, new gravy. (laughs) She's doing all kinds of new stuff. But when I had you on the podcast, it's probably about a year ago at this point, you talked about how you don't have as much flexibility because Lisa's is, I mean, Lisa's been in Omaha since I think 1938. Yes. So it is established. Mm-hmm. And when people come in and they want to get their, you know, short stack of pancakes with, you know, two over easy eggs, whatever, the, the number eight special, whatever it might be, they are expecting that exact version of the dish. You don't get, you you have some specials and stuff, but you don't have a whole lot of opportunities to play around. So what was this like for you to just have like a fresh ball of Play-Doh that this menu could just be whatever you wanted it to be? That has been the most fun part, just getting to explore and be creative with everything. It's so much fun. I love it. (laughs) I think that is actually one of the biggest reasons that enticed me to join this venture was to be able to explore the creativity a little bit and to get to do a little more of my baking side with my cinnamon rolls and stuff and Excited to add more to that too. Every day she's making cinnamon rolls. Most people maybe make cinnamon rolls twice in their life because it is a lot of work. You wait and you wait and then you <laughs> eat them all in like an hour, you know. Jennifer does that and she she's like put herself in that and I can't wait for you to add your cheesecakes. Yes. She has a lemon curd cheesecake that I would eat for breakfast. I mean, I think it's nutritionally sound. <laughs> You, you, you you're theory. a dietitian, so just say <laughs> it with confidence, it. and the rest okay. of us have to believe you. I've thought about it. It's definitely appropriate for breakfast. Just to prove it. It's proved. <laughs> Megan approved. Done. Okay, there is a dish that I need to ask you guys about because it, like, floored me when I had it. And it seems so simple in concept, but it was the, the bacon, ham, and cheese, or cheddar, I think it is, pancakes. So, it, I mean, I'd seen this on diners, drive-ins, and dives once, but I'd never actually experienced it. Basically, you're just taking breakfast meats, ham and bacon and cheese, and instead of having them on the side of the pancake, you're just stuffing them inside, and then you guys drizzle hot honey over the top. 
it's so simple, but it it was so delicious. Like I was legitimately sad when I got down to like the last two or three bites. I'm like, this is almost, I don't know the next time I'm having this. This is almost gone. Where did that come from? I mean, it definitely, it's definitely inspired. It was, I think, under pressure. So we were going to have a menu meeting and I hadn't written the menu yet. So Jennifer and Denise were coming up and I had to just show them something. And it was like, <laughs> what do I have? What can I make? And that's, that's like where our roots are. I mean, we didn't grow up with a lot of, a lot, you know, we, our parents were gone a lot. They ran a restaurant. They worked 18 hour days. We were home making up dinner. Yeah. All the time. All the time. And sometimes not with a lot of, a lot to choose from, you know, I mean, they struggled. And so mom had creativity and she taught us a lot of how to make, take the, the, the stuff you have and make it good. And we'd have pancakes for dinner on Wednesday nights a lot. Anything you want night. Yeah. Dad would do that. And then we would do it. Um, So there's a lot of like roots there. And at the radial, we kind of became famous for these stuffed pancakes, usually sweet. But mom made this Elvis pancake and she put bacon in it. So Mm -hmm. we kind of go crazy sometimes after, you know, family meal or whatever. And so it was a combination of all those things, those influences. And basically I had a menu meeting with the girls and I thought I better make something. And I had hot honey and I had ham and I had cheese and bacon because... It's good. It's good. And it's good. Yeah, it's it's delicious. <laughs> it's good, you know? It's the mixture like, of sweet and savory is just good every time. It's just so good. And people don't know. They're like, should we put syrup on this? I'm like, well, try it. Yeah. Up to you. What do you want? <laughs> the hot honey does it. Like, I don't ever want to use syrup on pancakes again. A oh. Hot honey is like my new syrup replacement. It's it's it. such a simple idea, but now that I'd never thought of it before. Now that it's in my brain, I can't take it out. Well, like great pancakes have that little bit of lace. Like the radial, it's the same. You get that tiny bit of crunch like there. And then if you put sharp cheddar cheese in something and it hits that flat top, it does magic. Crisps up real nice. It's like the most standard cheese, but it's so dang good. And we do that to our grown-up grilled cheese. I was just going to say. And we put the hot honey on that too. Which Jennifer was like, we have to have a (laughs) grown-up grilled cheese on the menu. And I was like, oh, okay. (laughs) And then we're like, can we put some mustard and honey, hot honey? What kind of, what do we want to do to it? (laughs) We have, we have like so many sauces. We're just sauce people. Like, it's all about the toppings. Yeah. (laughs) But that thing just, you know, it's born of invention. You use what you have. And um, simple ingredients are really good together when you put them in pancake batter. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what about the jalapeno popper stuffed French toast? Same damn dang thing. You, you can say damn. It's okay. Is that yes. A cuss word? <laughs> yes. No, we're good. <laughs> <Is that a> <laughs> <laughs> um, same thing. You know, it was just kind of like we wanted to have some fun. I When we, we talked about. We didn't, we made up the menu last minute. It was very, we were. This was all last minute. Yeah. In <laughs> it was our, in the, our in blind the, date speed dating in the In the <laughs> blind speed date of the four weeks of becoming bonded sisters with a, a new family. Um, and really like learning all about Ralston and just like falling in love with where this, where this could go for all of us. The menu is our last worry because the food is just like, it comes out of us. We have it figured out already. It's, I don't know. We could put anything on the menu and everything will we'll make it good. <laughs> um, so it was sort of last minute, but the popper thing, we just kept talking about our values and, you know, we have a lot of values, but one of them was fun. And you gotta want to have fun. That wanna, dish is fun. We want to have fun with our food. And I love like using humble ingredients and like those sort of like poor, poor people ingredients, like the stuff I would get in the box, you know, um, when the neighbors would bring you, bring you stuff, sometimes they're checking on you because your parents are working all the time. And, you know, we got cornflakes and cream cheese on everything (laughs) for a certain time in our life. And I love them together. They're great. Cornflakes are just crunchy and they're, they're wholesome and they're just, they're just fun. Jennifer didn't really like how they got all over the kitchen at first. It makes a mess on the grill. I can imagine. They just figured it out. Corn flakes <laughs> everywhere. She'd be like, Megan! <laughs> so for anyone who hasn't had this dish, it's two big fluffy pieces of, is it egg bread? Yeah, basically. Egg bread that are mm-hmm. stuffed with that signature jalapeno cream cheese. Then they're battered. Then they're covered with those the cornflakes that just get everywhere. Mm-hmm. Then they're griddled to like a perfect golden brown. Yeah. Then come the eggs. Then come the bacon. Mm-hmm. 
Then comes the hot honey drizzle. It's spectacular. What I really love is you guys throw like three strawberries on the side. Yes. So I feel like I'm eating. Whoa, yeah, I got my fruit too. I feel great about myself now. I don't need to go run 10 miles. We feel better too. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm like, wait, it eats two grapes. <laughs> this is, this is a dietitian fruit. thing. I'm like, I can't not have something fresh on every plate. It's and now a well-rounded meal because I got my fruit in. That's all that matters. Yeah. So you you said something really important there, Megan. Is you talked about the importance of knowing the Ralston community because it's it's different than the inner rail. It's different than down on you know Radio Highway. What did you guys do to kind of immerse yourselves and learn about that community, and, and what did you discover? Well, honestly, um, working with Denise has been amazing. She knows everybody in Ralston. And they have all come in to greet us and welcome us into the neighborhood. And when we did that wine walk, the first week we were open and we got to meet all the people when they came in, it was just so much fun. And we're looking forward to so many more things that are happening. The 4th of July event that they do, the Taste of Omaha this weekend. It is the greatest little community inside Omaha. And I just never even really knew how tight knit Ralston was. And I, I love it. I really do. Yeah. It's like a party all the time. They're just always doing something fun over there. And Denise just brought us in. She loves loves that city. Like, she just loves every. She knows every business. She'll give you a recommendation for, for anything you need. She knows somebody that you should support, and she does support. Um, and and people came came in because of her, I believe. But they want they love that place. They love the last restaurant. So. You know, I'm familiar with that. And we were at the radial, too. When we took over the radial, there were there was another person running it. That's a delicate, that's like um, you're, you're carrying a torch, you know. People are losing their, their favorite thing, and they're hoping they're going to gain something just as good. Um, so it's a responsibility thing. We just want to get to know everybody. And the wine walk happened, and hundreds of people came in. The first night. No, like, what, what is a wine walk? Um, it's a it Ralston thing. Sounds like fun. It's legal. I don't know how they did it, but the city of Ralston coordinated with, with businesses to let us pour uh, like a metered amount of alcohol, um, which we purchased but didn't sell. So they had, a, they had their own liquor license. And hundreds of people came through and got a sip. And then they sat in our dining room and asked us questions and looked at our menu and and I, I meet them all the time. Like, I met you at the wine walk. Thanks for coming back. And we just, we had so much fun with that. It was a lot of fun. It was a blast. We were just making snacks for everybody. We basically had a party. Yeah. I mean, we were there prepping anyway, so. <laughs> and if you don't know about the 4th of July, yeah, Ralston. I mean, Taste of Omaha is coming to Ralston next, this week. This weekend. Um, so we're we're excited about that to be part of, like, be part of that the pride that the community has and what's going on there and all the newcomers that are going to walk through hope they come by lemon tree and get some lemonade or whatever but um you know the fourth of july is the the biggest fourth of july parade in the state is it i believe anywhere i don't know it might be anywhere <laughs> i'm just gonna say anywhere and it's famous famous um and uh, we are, we're going to be part of it. We're going to put out a special menu. We're going to get a big tent. And there's going to be other food trucks. There's, it's like its own foodie event, the 4th of July. So you, what you do is you come early, get your spot, and then there are food trucks. And there's going to be ev everything and anything. And we have lots of plans yes, for that. They even do like a street dance the night before on the 3rd. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And we're going to have a... A thing set up on the corner there too yeah. so and it starts really excited to be like part of the community. Yeah. yeah it's like a four block event because it starts at the granary which is like the entrance of of 70 sec from 72nd street to to the district and then all the way past us by another block in each direction so yeah now be tons of fun. megan you mentioned how there was a another brunch spot previously in this spot before you guys moved in and, and you said you kind of want to keep carrying the torch for them but at the same time like you guys have your own concept you have your own ideas you're not just going to pick that restaurant up and replicate it for people so how do you like find that balance where you're doing your own thing and you're bringing like a breath of fresh air to this restaurant 
but also when when locals come in and they're like hey my old brunch spot is gone but there's a new one here like how do you keep them from having like a shock to the system how do you walk that line well we've had a couple um instances where people have not been extremely happy that we don't have omelets people are very upset we don't have omelets i'm working on that we ran an omelet special today we're going to start doing omelet specials uh during the week at least (laughs) so they're coming i promise um Honestly, we've been working with our regulars every day. We, we're starting to know our regulars and just learning what they like and listening to their feedback. Yeah, I think it's less important what's on the menu and more important what service is a feeling. Right. And I come from a fine dining background where, you know, I used to be a real, almost a zealot about this needs to be placed here and you need to greet someone in this many moments. And I don't, I believe now that service is is a feeling and it's an intention and it's love that you you, true service like if you're a servant then people feel that and that's what we do and the people that work with us um the ones that that stay that fit in that are our people they all feel that they want to welcome somebody so those those regulars they feel that and then they're like excited to try i got i got my first compliment from we have a group that's been supporting us since the very first day They've come every day and um, every day. they showed up every day that we were open for the first month and it was incredible. But I didn't get, I didn't get much emotionally out of it. I was like, it was, it was a interview, I think. But, but you know, at some point someone said, Megan, this was a really good pancake. <laughs> I got that. We was like week two. So we'd served a lot of meals, you know, and, but people that are willing to be part of your growth and your story um. Maybe you don't need their approval the first day. Maybe it's okay if they see you struggle a little bit. And I, I, I had a failure to launch on some things that, that maybe I could have succeeded at in life because I was worried they weren't perfect or weren't ready. And that's just not what we're about at Lemon Tree. <laughs> we're just, we're just there with like love and and we can cook a plate of food and we want you there. And it's it's a whole different feeling and and it's growing because of that. I think. You guys were laughing about how fast this all came together. So April 12th was your soft open. When was your like, when was the first like blind date that you had with Denise? February. It was. Holy cow. That fast. Yeah. It was fast. Really really (laughs) fast. Yeah. And we weren't even really sure. I mean, we didn't get a contract until like a day before we opened, right? <laughs> Holy <laughs> like, cow. We were just like, wait, what are we doing? Because we're we're all just so much in the future with it. Like, oh, where is this going? Where is that going? And the details came together quickly because um, all of our families just work our tails off. Like everybody showed up. Everybody. Everybody and their kids. Everybody and their husbands. Everybody and... The fiance, you know, we use like a husband, but, um, you know, I mean, and then, and even more coworkers, I mean, we had everybody then in the neighborhood, you know, so it was just kind of one of those things we pulled off, sort of, we're still pulling off, we're trying to pull off, but I'm not going to be overconfident on that, uh, but it's going well, um, it was, it went really fast, it was a, it was a, it was like, um, I mean, You've heard the the term, it's a God thing. Like it was a, it was literally a a divine inspiration. It came. That's our paint color, actually. Divine inspiration? Yes. That's literally our paint color. When we were, the day that we were painting the walls and Denise put it all up and I was like, I think I like that one. And she looks at me and she goes, it's called divine inspiration. It's perfect. (laughs) Wow, there you go. We're sold. (laughs) We just go, well, that's our, because that's been this whole project. It's just all come together. Yeah. And it is, it's, it's, um, it's one of those things you don't question. And I've come across that in my life before. So I trust it. Yeah. It's, it's just, it's a blessing. Yeah. Like what, what percent are you guys at to being like a hundred percent of what you want lemon tree to be? Cause it feels like stuff is getting added. Like omelets might be getting added. The cinnamon rolls were added recently. There was a biscuits and gravy event that you guys held the other day. Like there, I feel like there's new decorations every time I come in. Like, are we 60, 70%, 80%? 
I don't know. That might be hard to put a number on. I, I, I don't know that we're ever going to be ever going to be 100 <laughs> percent because oh. we have so many ideas and so many things we want to do, like adding a patio in the future and and um, our mocktail menu is coming out and our just have yeah, so many we have a thing we have want to do have, um, a lot of c- community partners that are friends that are brilliant that we want to give give space for. We have we have a building that we don't use much of the day. There are, there's pop-ups coming, there's events coming, catering, you know, private events. Like we have so much to give in terms of like our our food and our hospitality and our our love of other small businesses. I mean, being a trio of working women that have have had to struggle, like we have all been helped many times. So we have a long list of people that we want to do work with. It's, it's, I would say, I'm, I was like, am I at 30%? Maybe I'm 20%. But that's on the dream side and the creative side. Um, the last couple of weeks, I feel like we're at 90% with like the people that are in the building now. That's the most important. We went from having zero staff on day two. Yeah. Just the owners, owner operator, which is fine if you're a regular business that opens, but city of Ralston, like just like showered us with love yeah. and they, we were full. We were a full full on day one. I'm not complaining, but that's kind of like a, you don't hear about that happening really. Um, we weren't necessarily ready for it, but we did it, and we had <laughs> fun. Five. We had we fun. have stories to tell, and we made a lot of good food. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, so here we are, and now what's happened is the people that have come, they've seen that, and they want to be a part of it. So we have we have these gems. We just have these people that that um teach us things about ourselves and the world in the best way. Speaking of that early support, you had an Instagram post after that first week and it said, yeah, we sold out. We're going to triple everything that we make for next weekend in preparation. So come back out, like be excited. We will have more food. I promise. Did the early support surprise you guys? I mean, I don't, it didn't necessarily surprise us. I didn't expect it to be as much as it was. Like, I expected people to get excited, but I didn't know that it was going to blow up on social media as quickly as it did. So I think that part was kind of a surprise. I was I was surprised on, in every way. Like, I, I've i experienced it. Like, you know, by week three at the farmer's market, I had a line and it's never stopped. You know, like, people, when they find the food, they're showing up. And I thought the word would get out pretty fast, but... I didn't, not that fast. And, and, <laughs> and I more so it was like the love. It was, um, I mean, I cried when I saw all those flowers. <laughs> it was like, we, I kept coming out of the kitchen. We were in the kitchen. We didn't come out. We didn't see any of the guests for the first week. Jennifer and I were buried in the kitchen, working out new k- kinks with new equipment, you know, like, how does this griddle work? It has a hot spot here and it gets cold and it's like, it's like a person. We've already rearranged everything. In oh, we have spot. rearranged <laughs> that kitchen. So, you know, the technical part of starting a restaurant, most people do um, like a private soft opening for weeks. Um, I've been part of big corporate rollouts that are like, you're selling food to strain, you know, to paid, paid people for weeks before you let your employees talk to any of your real customers, right? But we did it. We just, we went out there and we did it. But I kept coming out of the dining room and I would find another flower arrangement, another vase, another. And, and the, what got me is that they were cut flowers from people's yards. So to me, that's way more precious than an exotic thing you buy from someone. But if you grew a daffodil and it's the first flower of spring, to cut it out of your yard and bring it into my restaurant and know that it's going to wither in a couple of days there. And it could have been in your yard. To me, that's extremely sentimental. So we had a counter and a window full of it. Wow. People cut branches off their trees to bring us red bud flowers. And that was Denise's mom, right? I think so, yeah. Yeah, I think that was Erica. So it's just like when you see that, that's deeper. That's more than that's more than coming to spend a dollar. Um, and And the person that did come to just like, find out what the heck we're cooking and and spend their hard-earned money. They're part of that. They were welcomed by the other patron, you know, and that's what the radial is. So that's what mom's dream is, is like recreating that. That's what we're recreating is the community part and the the excitement around food. Everyone stops at each other's tables. You see that? They get up 
and they're all talking to each other. And then I'll go, oh, you ran into somebody. And they know we're just talking. <laughs> it's it's a feel. And it's food Food makes friends. And um, that's what I want. And that's what's happening. So, yeah, it's a big surprise. It's a huge, um, it's a huge heart moment. I think that is probably the most amazing thing about Lemon Tree that I've seen. And now from this conversation, it stands out is like, in this very short amount of time, this restaurant and this community have come together and almost have like a symbiotic relationship where you're definitely feeding them great food, but they're also feeding you. They're inspiring you guys. And they, you're, they're they the reason that you, you know, wake up super early in the morning and work late hours, even though you have other restaurants and you have families, you keep coming back because this is a chance to give something to them. And I think that that just speaks to the heart of your restaurant and why it's been such a, you know, it, it's weird to see a restaurant just boom, like day one, week one, whatever, just hit the ground running. But you guys have, and I think that's why. Yeah. And when we get a slow afternoon, we're kind of like blessed by that because we can talk to the regulars and, and yeah. get to know people. We just like, that's our moment. It's not your moment to cut out early. It's like, we can, let's go have coffee with those people over there and I'll bring my cup over and, you know, we talk with them and um, let's let's get to know people um, and find out what the next special is going to be because yes. we're inspired by the diner. Like, you know, it's like, what do you want us to make? What do you, you know, <laughs> what do you want? Those cinnamon rolls, though, there is some kind of secret, like, signal because when Jennifer makes the cinnamon rolls, people come in <laughs> and I don't know how... And they always There's actually like a cinnamon rolls. bat roll yes. sig <laughs> signal she has up on the roof that she goes and turns some on. Kind of light. I don't know what's going on, but they know and they can get them and they the buy smell. them. They can smell it. It smells so good. And they're really special. And, you know, it's just, yeah, it's that perfect combo of food that's addictive mm -hmm. and people that love you. Well, unfortunately, I would love to talk to you guys for so much longer. We are up against it on time. But whether you are in Ralston, you're a part of this community, and you're a daily regular who's coming in for the first every day for the first month, or you're somebody like me who lives 25 minutes away, this is worth getting up early for and driving for. And if there's a line, it's worth standing in line. This food is excellent. I think you can tell just by listening to these two, the heart behind the restaurant, that these people are not people who are phoning in dishes. They are really thinking out and creating every dish very thoughtfully and that stands out so much in the food so megan and jennifer thank you so much for coming on the podcast and joining me again thank you for having us thanks dan great to see you omaha as always thanks for eating with us